Daniel, uh, in terms of, we, we've seen how much your side has improved um, in terms of goals and the three goals throughout the team at mm -hmm. the moment. How would you compare how you, your team's doing defensively this year? I mean, I, I guess to a degree it's it's not a fair comparison, mm -hmm. but, you know, because the more goals you score, the, the less the pressure is on it. But do you think you are still a better defensive unit than you were maybe this time last year? Mm, I got the feeling in the in last season we were... Um, we had some problems in the beginning of the season. Then we were de uh, defensively pretty, pretty solid. Um, there were perhaps in the in the whole season three or four exceptions with with the game. For example, the last game of the season where we conceded a few goals after many injuries, uh, or in one um, away game like like Hull, for example, was anyhow a bit um, yeah special game. Also with some strange uh, referee decisions. So there were one or two really yeah I would say uh, uh, games where. Um, where we had a poor defensive uh, behavior. And I got the feeling, so we are there with uh, a more consistency, or can't remember where on a game where we were in general pretty, pretty sloppy in our defensive behavior. Uh, but I still got the feeling we can even improve the, um, the number of conceded goals. So we are not too bad. I think a number five or six in the, in the whole league and in the lowest number of conceded goals. So it's good uh, without, without any doubt. But um, it's also a topic we spoke about. So the recent wins. Yeah, three-two win uh, or two-two or four-three against Millwall. So um, happy that we won these games and were able to turn the games. But it's also a topic we want uh, to add more clean sheets. It's it's not too bad so far. I think seven clean sheets and uh, everything's on a on a solid base. But we are always, um, yeah, our our claim is always to be uh, to be um, yeah close to perfection. I think in in, in our defensive behavior, um, we we can be there with with um, uh, with even um, less con uh, conceded goals and. Um, it's not so much always. Um, it has not, not so much always to do with the defensive behavior. But for example, in the last game, I got the feeling um, all the chances Bristol created was out of the yeah, a bit sloppy um, pass quality or whatever. So it was more like out of a counter attack. So it was not the general behavior against the ball. More like uh, to take a bit more care for the ball. It's also it it, it also depends uh, is is well connected with the defensive behavior and. It's a topic that um, our claim is to concede less goals because when you are the side who um, uh, is, a, is a team with the lowest number of, of goals in the whole league, you're always in a pretty, pretty good position and uh, that's what we're trying to do. Um, okay, so far I think just Middlesbrough and, and Leeds conceded um, yeah, really less goals than, than we are. We're in a good position, but um, yeah, we want to improve in this, uh, this topic. When you, uh, when you look at the teams you're coming up against and you're scouting them and, and getting all your analysis prepared, are you finding, come the game, they're doing things um, bespoke, you know, especially for you now, or are they doing their own game? I got the impression from Bristol City that there were elements there where they had tweaked what they were doing to make sure they were countering you, which I'm mm. sure is going to be a recurring mm. theme, but mm. I'm, I'm curious to know if, if, you can, if you can spot that in the build-up or whether it's, mm. you know, you get there and like, oh, okay. Yes, we have to speak about it. So it's quite normal when you are, uh, like we were in the, in the last weeks, in the, in the league leader position, or right now in a position which, which, uh, which would means direct promotion. Each and every team is is a bit more focused, okay, because they know we are in a good shape, and they are unbelievably greedy to be the first team who wins, perhaps against us, and and um, it's more or less a spotlight game for them because there's lots of attention when they play against the league leaders or a side who is. On uh, such a, uh, such a good run, um, and you got the feeling so the intensity and the aggressiveness in the game, and also um, the awareness how we play, and and perhaps um, that they are a bit more taking care. Okay, perhaps where is the chance to beat us? They are a bit more focused on on these games. Uh, you could feel this, but it's also a chance for us because um, then perhaps sometimes they lose a bit uh, the way how they want want to play and are a bit too much focused on us. So. Um, it could be an advantage sometimes, it could be a disadvantage, so it's, it's just important that we are really focused on, on our performance level and, and don't take uh, care too much uh, um, yeah, about how greedy and how aggressive uh, the other teams um, are playing. So uh, we will be all, always um, uh, there also put pretty much in a determining role for, uh, for the result and uh, that's what we're trying to do. And I assume, obviously you know what your side strengths are and mm -hmm. what you're good at. But you, you must have a really good handle on what the weaknesses are and where the way you play is where that would open the door for opponents. You must have to be aware of that and then I guess try and mitigate that as best as you can. Yes, absolutely. So um, meanwhile, many, many opponents are 
pretty much concentrated on, on being at first pretty solid in defending because they know, okay, if we are there with a draw or a clean sheet against the league leaders or against the top side in the league, it's, it's already a, a good result. So for that, uh, we, have to, uh, we have to be prepared pretty often how to, to find solutions against a deep-sitting uh, opponent, but also to be prepared that we can control the counters. So it's, it's a pretty, pretty important topic, how to control the, um, the counters of the, um, uh, of the opponents, because that's what they're trying to do a lot. But I also got the feeling in the recent game, so um, we were not open in the, in the, in the counter action, not at all. So it was not like we were in under load, um, but perhaps the last two or three percent in order to repair perhaps the loss of the ball, um, we can even improve uh, in, uh, in this topic. And um, yeah, that's, uh, that's um, a topic we spoke about a lot and we will have to work further on because to be there with clean sheets and really, really solid defending behavior um, yeah, will be a key to, to be um, able to stay in such a good position in the league. Uh, this time last year, I guess you were heading into your first Christmas as a manager in England, right? Yes. Was the, the first time you didn't just get to put your feet up and, uh, <laughs> and open presents. Uh, and I, I, I think the thing that stands in my stays in my mind from last Christmas was, was uh, Burton, where you changed made big changes to the mm. side to preserve what happened around. I think it worked, didn't it? Because you won the, mm. won the Birmingham game and which have you. But mm. do you take a lot from that first Christmas as to how you are? looking at this one and I know you'll go game to game but I'm, mm. I'm sure there's an element of you that will look at the load and try and work out the best way of managing that I mean I'm also thinking like say Tim Closer the fact that you're perfectly happy to give him a little bit longer so that he's mm. ready in the middle of it mm. maybe, rather than pushing a little bit harder mm. to get him mm. for this set I think as a, as a head coach you always have to, to learn and be open for, for some lessons and, and, and to try to analyse and to take the best out of each and every uh, each and every period. To be honest, it's not so unusual to have such a period in the in the championship because uh, okay, it's a bit special because it's a Christmas period. But in in general, you have several time situation when you have four or five games within fourteen days or something something like this. And uh, for that, you learn nearly out of uh, each and every um, uh, each and every period. And the thing is, you, we can't compare the situation um, with the last season because we're in a, in a totally different role. So, in the last season was about around the Christmas period. We had to um, win several points in order to to make sure that um, yeah we, we are not anyhow involved in the relegation battle. And also, there were um, a situation when we um, know okay, it could be that we. Uh, that we lost some key players like Alex Pritchard, so there were already some uh, some rumors, and it was a bit difficult. And right now, we are in a top position in the league. We uh, we are full of self confidence. Many players are fit. Okay, we can um, be a bit more relaxed with some key players who are coming back right now after injury, like with Grant or like with uh, like with Tim. Um, yeah, you you keep the experiences from the last year and also from the uh, periods when we had this load um, in order how to handle this load uh, right now in this position but it's it's if you're honest it's a bit different uh, to the situation in in, uh, in last season and um, yeah in, in general so in, in such a period I think it is important to um, be a bit careful with the load to rotate a bit uh, but perhaps not that much um, like we did um, in, in several situations in comparison to the last season because yeah, we got the feeling right now. It's it's also important that you stick a bit more to to the um, uh, to the starting lineup in in order to um, yeah in in order to to go for the on with this performance, not to break the rhythm too much. So I think in last season we had to do this a little bit a bit more, and in the end I think the spirit worked out. I think yeah, during the spirit we were there with many many points, ten or thirteen, I think thirteen points out of five games, and and. We were also, I think, nominated for Mensch of the Month in January and whatever. So um, we had a pretty good, uh, pretty good period um, after a tough Brentford game. I think after that we had a brilliant period. And um, yeah, if we have the same amount of points, like five points out of uh, or oh, thirteen points out of five games, yeah, it would be nice. <laughs> Just finally, uh, last night you were served a meal by the Academy scholars, who I, I think have cooked it. You're still here now, so that's good. Yes. Um, how was it? Was nice. Was nice. I uh, was a bit concerned before because, uh, yeah, I wasn't sure if our um, our young lads were able to prepare this. But uh, yeah, my first view was who was uh, in this room, and Delia was there, and I was pretty calm down after 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 realizing that Delia is there as well. So I thought, okay, it should be everything uh, all right with the food. And yeah, it was nice. It was was good for the togetherness. Also, it shows how how strong the bond is within the club, and also. 
uh, good for the players. I think uh, several lads were yeah, a bit nervous when they had to surf and, and didn't want to make a mistake and uh, try to hold the pressure a bit high with some, some comments, but they were able to handle it. And uh, yeah, good lesson then perhaps in, in order to play hopefully one day in front of 30,000 um, people when they can stand my comments and, and don't crack under this pressure. Um, it's a good first step. Uh, indeed. And there is a serious point, I guess, isn't there? Because I mean, have you noticed there's a lot going on at the academy, of course, in, in recent years, and you're benefiting from some of that, but can you see a difference in the academy and the, the, the development of the place compared to when you first arrived here to now? Yeah, first of all, the infrastructure. I think this is a, a, a milestone for the for the club. What we are investing uh, with the bond into the infrastructure and 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 uh, big big compliments to to our key people in the club that they were brave enough and and able to to do this. I think it's nothing what happens perhaps uh, tomorrow or in two weeks, but on the on the mid and long term, it's it's a crucial thing thing for the club. And I think it's also also important that we had this success with uh, several young players that they know okay. They're not too far away, and there's a possibility there. There, are, um, there is a pass into the first team, and that they are involved, and um, that the key people in the in the in the club trust the young players, and and they, okay, they have to go through the door. We can bring them to the um, to the door and and give them all the opportunities, but they have to to make the step through the door, and and it always uh, will depend on. Um, on the performance and and if they are greedy to work and and there are no um, no gifts or no presents just because we believe in uh, in youth and and we want to involve our youth so no uh, it always depends on the performance and uh, um, but we we support them and there is a there are all opportunities when they are, are willing to work hard and and they deliver with performances and I think this is. Um, mentality and this, this atmosphere is, is quite important for the club and you see that um, this helps to motivate our young players to, to work even even harder but um, and they did in the in the recent months and a big big compliment also to to all the key people who were involved especially in our academy but yeah each and every day we have to have to go for the on so it's no time to rest and and to say right now everything is done and everything is prepared for the future you have to work for the on hard otherwise um, there won't be uh, many um, young players involved, so it's it's not like because they are um, nice lads and they are able to cook in a proper way, or we, we believe in you, so they have to work and have to deliver. That's good news. Good. Good. Yeah, no,